Okay now, Johnny, would you say it's time to panic now? Um, I'm not gonna push it tonight, but uh, maybe after I'm done this fan reaction, I should get into the crawl space and find it just in case we need it on Saturday. You ever just wanna get down on one knee and thank the hockey gods upstairs that Phil Forsberg is a Nashville predator? Hey everybody, it's Jersey Guy. Hold my beer. Are you sure you want me here? Patrick will watch anybody. Is it maybe somewhere that we owe a massive debt to the hockey gods? Again and again and again. Feel like a kid again, Johnny. Is happening? Is this happening? Is this happening? This isn't an ad for some dang cookie. I want a piece of that action. Well, you don't have to tell me twice. What do you have to tell me that is going to make me feel positive? And maybe the Titans won't let us down on Thursday. Prince, walk it off. Okay, on with Johnny's reaction video. But then to take you home. Ah, here we are again. Prince lose 4-2 to two to the Edmonton Oilers Thursday night inside Bridgestone Arena. They have now started 0-4 this season. Okay, I'm going to get the couple positives out of the way so I don't overshadow them and then think, oh, I should have mentioned it just to cheer people up a little bit. I mean, get those out of the way and focus solely on a negative because how can there be that many positives when this team has now lost four in a row in regulation? Positives? Phil Forsberg scored another goal. And I didn't mention this in Dallas recap, but that's now 289 career goals for him. He's 11 away from 300. It would be nice if they were coming in wins, but Maybe they'll break through and he'll get a nice bushel, but through four games, I can't complain it. I guess he's gotten two goals this season. Congratulations to everyone's favorite punching bag on the blue line, Luke Shen, on playing 1,000 games now. Yes, I know he can make mistakes, but he does do a lot of things right, and he must be doing something right to stick around this long playing 1,000 games. Now for the negatives. I should have known that something might be up in this game when Jeremy Gover, this is no offense to him, but Jeremy Gover kind of got my hopes up with his stat about what Calvin Pickard's lifetime record was in Nashville. 0-4 lifetime coming into this game. A 90.2% save percentage. That's not bad for having four losses and a 3.57 goals against average. We were all thinking, hey, let's continue this. Let's get this off on the right foot finally this season when the Oilers, who did win on Tuesday against the Flyers, had to do it in overtime. And then, I don't know their travel schedule by heart, but I have to assume they couldn't leave Edmonton until Wednesday morning. And that's a long flight from Edmonton, Alberta to Nashville. How could they have had that much playing time? Maybe there was a little hangover, but nope. Nope. You know, Nashville is still their punching bag after that long winning streak that Peter Laviolette had as Preds head coach against the Oilers. I think I heard that coming into this game, that was eight straight wins by the Oilers over Nashville, so now make that nine. I appreciate that the Preds finally had a lead in the game this season. Yes, that's right, Preds Nation. Through three games coming into this one, the Preds had not had a lead in a single game. So that amounts to, what, six minutes and change? And then that would be the it for this game after Philip Forsberg scored. Kulak scored near the end of the first period. A period that the Preds could have been trailing much more in if not for the work of UC Soros as the Oilers were out shooting the Preds in the first period, 15 to seven. Now, as we hit the second period, I want to reiterate how the fact that the Preds had seven shots on goal in the first period, they ended up with seven shots on goal in the second period. More times than not, if you have 14 shots on net through two periods, you're probably in a hole and it's going to be hard to get out of as you're going to have to be insurmountable with your pressure in a third period. 14 shots on goal through the first 40 minutes of a hockey game is not good enough, guys. Now, the officials aren't without fault in this game. As seven minutes into the second period, in the Preds zone, you've got Jeremy Lazon going into the corner, battling for the puck with Connor McDavid, and a defensive play, which is what he did, gets called for holding. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. It's Connor McDavid. It's Connor McDavid. You blow on him and a ref's going to blow the whistle. That was not holding. That was battling for the puck. But, of course, the Oilers catch a break. And then the Preds, to their credit, almost kill it off. But the refs are like, oh, well, we better help out the Oilers a little bit more. And Cole Smith gets called for hooking on Evan Bouchard. Still a little questionable. Oh, yes, but it doesn't stop there, folks. The Preds amazingly kill off all four Oiler power plays for the game, including this two-man advantage through this end in the second period. But just after that ends, scramble in front of Soros. And would someone please like to explain this to me, why this wasn't blown dead? You've got... Jeff Skinner's knee on UC Soros's head. Okay, and of course I get stuck with, once again, thank you, thank you NHL Center Ice. I get stuck with the Oilers feed and I have to find out on Twitter the proper replay because of course Sportsnet West isn't going to show me the fact that this wasn't called. Soros is up with his helmet off and I'm thinking, did something happen there? How did his helmet come off so quickly. The refs don't pull, don't blow it dead. Unfortunately, Andrew Burnett doesn't challenge it for goalie interference. I will be curious to see why he didn't challenge it, but you can clearly see that it should have been. Skinner, to top it all off, gets the goal bounced off of Luke Shen, and the Oilers have retaken the lead 2-1 after Four minutes or so after the Oilers have retaken their lead, Vasari Pakosin high sticks Jeremy Lazon gets a double minor for it, so the Preds go to the power play. And fortunately, they don't score on the first two minutes of it, but with about 45 seconds left to go on the second part of it, Oilers clear the puck, Soros King since the Oilers' line change correctly, gets it out to Roman Yossi, who down the left wing board, saucers it over to Jonathan Marks, so who bats at it out of the air, beats Stuart Skinner, and ties this game at two. What great sense by Saros to get that breakout. And if I don't hit at it later, you know, as compared to maybe not pulling his weight enough against Seattle, I don't want to hear anybody complain about Soros' performance in this one. The guys in front of him did nothing. Because sure enough, after the Preds have tied this game at two, and you're thinking maybe the momentum will change in their favor, 44 seconds after tying it, yes, of course, former Pred Matthias Ekholm sets up Connor McDavid, who, unbeknownst to me and probably many other of us, through what? four or five games for the Oilers this season, Connor McDavid gets his first goal of the season because of course he would. Of course he would. After the Oilers finally get off to Schneid and win their first game on Tuesday night, Connor McDavid would get his first goal of the season against us, making us even more miserable. And you know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much to Sportsnet West during the second intermission for sticking it in my face as a Preds fan, having Gene Principe interview Jeff Skinner on that go-ahead goal, making no mention, no mention whatsoever that maybe it was a little questionable. Maybe Bruno should have challenged it. Maybe the ref should have been on the ball and called it dead because it was goalie interference. In the third period, is there really anything to be positive about? The Preds outshot the Oilers 13-8, to but they weren't getting any sustained pressure. No rebounds to give me any shred of confidence that they were going to tie this game and maybe pull out a W and finally get off the snide. And sure enough, Brett Kulak eventually, when the Preds pull Soros, gets his second of the game, and the Oilers ice this game for 2 sending the Preds to their first 0-4 start in franchise history. Okay, so here's where we are through four games this season. Like I said, yes, the Preds are 0-4 for the first time in franchise history. Now, for the fanatics about this team 
who know them just as much as I do, you might say, hey, Johnny, Johnny, what about the 0203 team? That team started off pretty bad. And didn't they lose a lot of games to start? Yes. They lost their first two games in regulation. But you know what they did in games three and four? They lost those in overtime. And then the fifth game, they tied. Then they lost two more in regulation before finally winning. This team has zero points to show for their work. The Vancouver Canucks won in overtime in Florida on Thursday night. So now we are down to three NHL teams who don't have a win to show for it. And if you want to rub some more salt in the wound, San Jose, who wasn't projected to do anything this season, they have two pity points of overtime losses this season. So it's really just down to the Preds and the Avalanche who are stuck at zero points. Now, the Avalanche coming up have, I think, the Ducks tomorrow night, and then they play the Sharks on Sunday. You gotta think they're gonna get a win out of one of those two games. I gotta think. So, it's up for the Preds. Are they gonna be the last team in the league this season to get a W? They have Detroit coming into Bridgestone Saturday afternoon before finishing their homestand next Tuesday at home against Boston. Both those teams are not pushovers. Now, I did a little research last night because I was curious that the 0 3 team, as bad as it was, it wasn't the last team that season to record a victory. The Atlanta Thrashers, now Winnipeg Jets were, but the 0-6-0-7 Preds, even though they only started 0-3, they were the last team to get a victory. Props to that one, though, because that team, as we all know, even though they lost in the first round against the Sharks, they would go on to manage to win 51 games that year. So I don't have it right in front of me, but I imagine there was some long-sustained winning streaks that year. But I'll tell you this, because I saw this from Barry on Twitter, and if you're a Preds fan, you probably know who this man is, so I will take him at his word, even though I can't find this right now. Gord Stellick on NHL Satellite Radio, I'm assuming, I think I know where his show is, mentioned the fact that no NHL team has started a season 0-4 and went on to win the Stanley Cup. Ah, lovely. Fills me of so much hope for this season. But maybe there's a first time for everything. But you know what this team needs to do here? It needs to get its butt in gear. It needs to get couple some wins together. And, you know, they're going to have to get a significant, not overly, a win streak that is not impossible, but a significant win streak to make up for this slow start, okay? This team has too much hope. Yeah, I know it's on paper. Too much hope to look this bad four games into the season, okay? Whatever is not working, okay? Even when they started 5-10 and 10 last year, they at least gave me some hope that something was going to click. There's veteran leadership on this team from other teams that have been put together. As Barry Trott said, he wants guys to come to Nashville who want to win, not to retire. Some people on this team are looking that way and it needs to change quick. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click a like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. You can find my social media and interact with me during every Preds game. Win or lose. Hopefully more wins here soon by clicking on a channel name. Tell all your friends about Redemption and the Preds fan who can get angry into his camera a lot recently. And <sighs> breathe, okay? I just have to hope that they've learned something, maybe against a team they've already played this season, and we'll get the W Saturday afternoon against Detroit.